Hello, I welcome you all in this course on power plant engineering. Uh, today, we will discuss about the steam turbines and topics which are going to be covered in this lecture are principle of operation of steam turbines, steam engine and steam turbine. We will make a comparison between steam engine and the steam turbine because steam engine was the first device which converted heat into the useful work. So, we will compare the performance of steam engine with the steam turbine classification of a steam turbine we will discuss here and the working of impulse and uh, reaction turbines. So, <laughs> steam turbine is an integral part of any uh, thermal power plant where water is the working fluid because in a Rankine cycle if we draw Rankine cycle on a temperature and entropy diagram this is temperature and this is entropy. Uh, This is Rankine cycle, right? Simple Rankine cycle. If we want to show the compressor work, then it is going to be like this, right? So, state 1 to state 2, 2 to 3 takes place inside the condenser, 3 to 4 pumping of uh, the water. Now, 4 to 1 is heating in the boiler. So, in the boiler, sensible heating and the latent heating both takes place. And after that, the expansion of steam in a turbine is in a turbine and here the steam turbine is fixed. It steam turbine is a rotodynamic machine right and it converts uh, I mean uh, the, the low grade energy or the, uh, the enthalpy of uh, steam high pressure steam to the useful work it extract the work and the exhaust we get steam with the low enthalpy. So, the work of the turbine is if we consider turbine as a as an open system then it is going to be H 1 minus H 2 this is the work output work output of the turbine is H 1 minus H 2 enthalpy at state 1 minus enthalpy at state 2. Uh, in a steam engine for example, if you take a steam engine. What happens in the steam engine? In the steam engine, there is a movement of the system boundary. The piston compresses the uh, the steam, and then expansion steam enters the cylinder. Then the piston moves in this direction. So there is a to and fro motion of the piston, which constantly changes the control volume. However, in the case of a steam turbine, uh, the control volume is fixed. The the output we get by the dynamic action of the steam. Here we get dynamic action of the steam. However, in the steam engine, it is by virtue of high pressure of the steam, right? A steam pushes the piston back, and then the power is produced. Here in the steam turbine, a steam glides over the blade surface. It does not strike the blade. It glides over the blade, and due to change in the direction of the uh, uh, velocity of the steam, there is a change in the momentum, and this change in momentum causes the force. So, this is the basic difference in the uh, working principle of uh, uh, steam engine and the steam turbine. Because in a steam turbine, the velocity of steam is very high. I mean, the steam which is entering the, the, the turbine may have the velocity of let us say 1100, sorry, 1100 meters per second of that order. And with this high velocity, if it strikes the blade, it will damage the blade. So, it is always ensured that when steam is entering the blade, it simply glides over the blade surface. When it glides over the blade surface, there is a change in the direction of the steam, right? When there is a change in the direction of the steam, there is a change in momentum of the steam. And when we calculate the rate of change of the momentum of the steam, we get the work output. This is how uh, the steam turbine works. Now, the issue is suppose there is a blade, suppose there is a blade steam entering from this side, it steam will never enter in this direction. It will enter from this side along the blade curvature. So, this, so this is blade and leaving this side from the blade and blade is fixed, blade is not moving. When the blade is not moving, then this is velocity C 1 and this is velocity C 2 and C 1 is equal to C 2. When the blade is not moving, <laughs> we will get the maximum force. 
Now suppose blade starts moving with the velocity u. Suppose u is c1 by 4 or c1 by 8. If you draw a, a, a graph between <coughs> uh, force and uh, velocity, velocity ratio u by v1, c1. This is u by c1. So u by c1 is is zero. I mean, when u is zero, then u by c1 is zero. In that case, force is going to be the maximum one. Now, blade also moves in this direction because until unless the blade moves, we will not get any output. If blade is rigid and the steam is gliding over the blade, though it is exerting the force. But there is no displacement, there is no work. Work will come from the displacement, work will not come from the force, right. So, displacement has to be there. So, displacement means the blade should move. And the, when the blade is moving with the velocity u, suppose it starts moving slowly with the velocity u may be c1 by 4 or c1 by 10. In that case, this c2 will be less than c1. If you look at the energy conservation point of view, the kinetic energy at inlet is equal to kinetic energy at outlet when there is no energy dissipation in this direction. When there is a dissipation of energy, definitely C2 will be less than C1. In that case, the force will reduce, right. So, when the U starts increasing, F starts, when U becomes C1, when suppose U becomes C1. In that case, the force will become 0, will not get any output. So, will not get any output when this is uh, rigid or not moving at all. In that case, work output is 0. And if the steam velocity is equal to blade velocity, so steam will simply not glide on the blade, right. So, moving with the same velocity, relative velocity is 0. So, in that case also, the force is 0. So, u by c1 when u by c1 is 0 and u by c1 is 1, then there is a the the the, out, the the force is zero. Now let us talk about the output. Now we start getting when when there is a movement in the blade. Initially the output is zero because there is no movement of the blade. When the blade is rigid, we are getting maximum force, but the blade is rigid. Blade is not moving. When blade starts moving, we start getting output, work output. And work out is output is maximum when this is half, right? Because it is a product of displacement and the force. Subsequently, when u by c1 exceeds 0 0.5, it starts decreasing, and it also turns to be zero when u by c1 is equal to one, right? This is the basic uh, uh, principle of uh, the working of any uh, steam turbine. Here what happens, there are two types of turbines, impulse turbine and impulse reaction turbine. Now, in impulse turbine, pressure drop does not take place in the blade passage. And impulse reaction turbine, pressure drop also takes place in the blade passage that we will discuss later on. Now, first we will compare, because steam engine with the steam turbine versus steam turbine. First of all efficiency, steam engine has only 20 percent efficiency, 20 percent is good, I mean 15 percent, 12 percent, here the efficiency is 60 percent, substantially high. <laughs> steam engine has reciprocating parts, it has slider crank mechanism and uh, reciprocating parts, the reciprocating motion of the piston is converted into the rotary motion and it is a rotary machine, so there is no issue of balance, unbalanced force or the efficiency or any sliding. So, sliding parts are minimum, right and it is a rotary machine. So, that is why the uh, efficiency is high, the losses are less. RPM of a steam engine is very low. RPM steam engine may vary from 120 to 300, maximum 300 RPM steam engine, right. If you look at the steam turbine, it goes up to 30,000. Single stage steam turbine can go up to 30, 40,000 rpm. It is quite high. Lubrication is required in a steam engine. In steam turbines, lubrication is not required, right? Maintenance, because <laughs> there are less sliding part in the steam turbine, maintenance is less. In case of uh, steam engine, the maintenance, more maintenance is required. 
and the most interesting thing is in steam engine the back pressure is the atmospheric pressure the steam is exhausted to the atmosphere. Now, here we have condenser and if you look at the Carnot cycle sorry this uh, Rankine cycle temperature entropy. Now, expansion of steam here we use condenser here 2 to 3 and condenser pressure is 7 to 10 kilo Pascal absolute pressure. So, it works under high vacuum ideally it, it should be 0, 0 but it cannot be 0 not only for the season of thermodynamics, but for some practical reasons also because in condensers we use cooling water because he, how steam is condensed? A steam is condensed in a condenser with the help of cooling water right cooling water. So, temperature of cooling water has to be less than the temperature of steam only then we can condense the steam right and when the cooling water which is available at let us say 25 degree centigrade. 25, 25 degree centigrade. So, steam temperature has to be around 40 degree centigrade only then we can condense the steam. If we reduce this temperature difference condenser size will increase more surface area will be required. If we increase that this temperature difference then we can reduce the size of the condenser, but power output has to be sacrificed. So, a good compromise has to be made between these two. Right, and normally the steam condenser pressure, a condensing steam temperature is maintained between 35 to 40 degree centigrade depending upon the availability of cooling water. And the last thing is coupling of with the generator, the steam turbine is, is easier for a steam turbine is easier than a steam engine. So, of, uh, so, clearly the steam turbine is more useful for power generation or uh, purpose than the steam engine. Now, there are different type of steam turbines. First of all, I as I explained you impulse and impulse reaction turbine. Now, impulse turbine is that turbine where uh, when, when the steam enters the blade channel there is no pressure drop. So, when a steam entering from this side at pressure P 1 it will leave this side at pressure P 1 only. So, whatever the pressure drop takes place it takes place inside the nozzle because in impulse turbine nozzles are used. So, nozzle the function of the nozzle is to increase the in kinetic energy of steam at the expense of potential energy. So, first law of for open system also applies for the nozzle. So, if there is a nozzle right. So, <coughs> so, it has uh, potential energy potential if it is a horizontal no nozzle then change in potential energy is 0 then pressure energy and kinetic energy. So, here at the entry the so we assume negligible velocity at the exit there is a pressure drop due to this pressure drop the kinetic energy of the working fluid or the steam increases and with this high velocity velocity as mentioned earlier it can go up to 1100 meters per second. So, with this velocity steam enters the blade it glides over the blade and leave the blade. Now, impulse reaction now reaction what is reaction turbine in reaction turbine this passage is not uniform right and uh, air foil type of blades are taken uh, air foil type of blades are taken right. So, passage is not uniform this passage area is not uniform and expansion of steam takes place inside the passage also right and this causes reaction. So, it has impulse action and reaction action both both actions. So, that is why it is called impulse reaction turbine nowadays most of the turbines are impulse reaction turbines. Uh, in addition to this we can classify turbines as axial flow turbines. normally most of the turbines are axial flow turbines because in axial flow turbines suppose this is axis of uh, this is a shaft axis this is the shaft axis steam will move in this direction right and this shaft axis will have blades will have blades uh, like this blade head legs at different places right. So, when steam sorry blades will be like this this is shaft blades will be like this at different places when steam will glide over the blade it will push the blade in this direction 
right when suppose steam entering from here it is gliding over the blade it is pushing the blade in this direction and this will cause torque on the shaft and shaft will move in this direction right so this is how uh, the axial flow so th most of the turbines are uh, uh, axial flow turbines there are certain turbines which are uh, radial flow turbines also the blades their fixed and moving blades are in uh, a, a radial direction and there are certain tangential turbine where the steam uh, enters in a tangential direction the, those turbines are i mean small capacity turbines and normally they are used for running the auxiliaries in the power plant not the ma main power plant so we can say axial turbine is parson turbine parson's turbine axial turbine ex oh, sorry the radial example is uh, Jungstrom. Jungstrom turbine. <laughs> but these, uh, uh, what we call uh, the uh, axial radial tangential turbine, they are not very efficient, and as I said earlier, they are used for normally running the auxiliaries in a power plant. Now, in addition to this, we can do the classification single pressure and dual pressure or reheated turbines. So, single pressure means a turbine just getting steam at high pressure and at low pressure the steam leaving the turbine. This is a single pressure turbine. But we have we can have two inlets also. Now this will become dual let suppose steam entering here at uh, 30 bar, steam entering here at 10 bar, and when both the I mean streams are leaving from here to the condenser at subatmospheric pressure. So this is type of known as dual turbine. We can have turbines, we can blend steam at some point, heat it and then re-enter it the steam. This is known as reheat type of turbine. There is a very a, another type of classification can be there is a, a turbine which is known as pass out turbine. Or extraction turbine. Now in extraction turbine this is the the, the during the expansion the 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 steam is trapped at a certain point and it is used for certain process in the industry. Right. Similarly, back pressure turbine. Back pressure turbine, the exhaust of the turbine does not go to the condenser. It go for, this. for example, back pressure turbine are normally used in sugar industries, okay, where the, the steam at low pressure is required. So, power is generated in the turbine and the exhaust of the turbine is sent for the process. So, these type of turbines are <coughs> uh, known as uh, back pressure turbines. Now, after that we can also classify turbines as single flow turbine, I mean the flow is taking place in one direction, there is a single flow turbine or you can have sorry this double flow turbines, steam entering from the middle and moving in two different directions, double flow turbine. Reverse turbine is also there when moving in this direction then steam reverse back that is known as reverse. So, we can have a number of uh, uh, classification from uh, steam turbine normally and they can I mean if there is a has to be done banking of the turbine we can have tandem comp comp that is known as compounding of turbine. What happens in the single stage turbine if you take uh, impulse turbine I will draw a diagram for impulse turbine then it will be more clear. Suppose in a, in a turb single stage turbine there is a nozzle and there is a nozzle. Nozzle will increase the velocity of high pressure steam and then in this is casing and then this steam will pass over a turbine blade and this is turbine blade. And then it will go to the exhaust. So, 
So, steam is entering from here. So, when a steam is entering from here, the velocity of steam is increasing, pressure is falling, right. Now, when the steam is passing over the blade, the pressure is remaining constant, pressure is remaining constant. And what is happening to uh, the velocity? Velocity is also getting reduced. And at the exit, this is the pressure and this is the velocity, right. And we have a series of blades here, right. Now, here what is happening? A lot of energy is going wasted. Single steam. So, there are two things which are happening in steam turbine RPM is high. RPM let us say 30,000 RPM it is quite high. For generators we need 3000 RPM. At the same time kinetic energy of the steam which is leaving the passage is quite high. So, in order to avoid this or in order to address this problem compounding of uh, stages is done. It means the pressure drop does not take place at one stage it takes place in different stages. So, we will have array of this this combination pressure nozzle turbine blade the nozzle turbine blade nozzle turbine blade. So, what will happen that part of the pressure will fall power output will be done given then exhaust of this will go to the next nozzle right then pressure will fall kinetic energy will increase the power will be generated this is known as compounding of turbine. So, because the, the pressure does not fall in one stage in that case in for every stage. So, suppose there are n number of stages. So, for every stage the pressure drop the pressure ratio has reduced right. For this reason the RPM will reduce right, but we have increased the number of stages. So, from each stage we will getting some power. So, power will remain same RPM will reduce it means torque will increase torque which is developed on the power, uh, shaft will increase, RPM will reduce, power generation will remain same and you will find at the exhaust of the compound uh, compounded pressure pressure compounded steam turbine the velocity of exhaust is very low. So, <coughs> efficiency is also very high right. So, there are two types of compounding uh, one is uh, um, uh, uh, impulse compounding and where the pressure sorry the pressure com not impulse compounding pressure compounding where pressure drop takes place in number of stages another is velocity compounding where velocity drops in the number of stages. So, <coughs> there are two types of so in velocity compounding there is only one nozzle and the velocity falls in number of stages and when the velocity when the expansion takes place because in in, the, in later stage the pressure is low the volume of uh, the steam keeps on increasing specific volume of steam keeps on increasing. So, in every power plant suppose in a normal power plant there is no single turbine they are I mean high pressure turbine they are known as HP turbines, they are low pressure turbines this is known as LP turbines and in between they are intermediate pressure turbine IP. So, there can be IP 1, IP 2, LP 1, LP 2 depending upon the output of the or design of the power plant and the output of the power plant they can have these turbines and each turbine will have number of stages. Now, by visual observation you can judge which one is a HP turbine which one is a low pressure turbine because in HP turbine because mass flow rate is same. So, in high pressure turbine the density of the steam is high or a specific volume of the steam is low. So, size of the turbine will be less smaller it will be smaller in size. If you look at the low pressure turbine it will be larger in size. So, just by visual inspection you can judge which one is the low pressure turbine which is one is the intermediate and which one is the high pressure turbine. <coughs> Now, we will discuss a specific difference between impulse and impulse reaction turbine, impulse and impulse reaction turbine the basic difference. In impulse turbine pressure drop takes place only in nozzles right. Impulse reaction turbine it takes place in, 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 in the moving blades as well here the moving blades no pressure drop takes place. 
impulse turbine has constant blade channels so blade channels are simple in impulse turbine here there is a air foil uh, channels so uh, the, it is a little complicated geometry so they are profile type of blades they are air foil type of blades in impulse turbine there can be a partial admission also i mean all the nozzles have the steam does not have pa to pass through the, all the nozzles if you want to control the output we can pass steam through certain nozzles and we can control the output higher for in the in this case there is all round admission in, in this impulse reaction turbine the admission of the steam has to be all round there are other methods of controlling the output but as far as the admission of steam is concerned it is all round admission of steam in the uh, uh, turbine <coughs> here in this case the diaphragm there is a diaphragm which has the nozzles and here impulse reaction turbine they are fixed blades so there are two type of blades one type of blades which are fixed on the uh, rotor and there is are fixed blades also which are fixed on the casing they they they, are, they, are, they do not touch the rotor so when the rotor moves these blades remains fixed this is how the we attain the fix the moving blades and these blades they rotate with a, a, a certain speed <laughs> so power as far as the power is concerned very high power can be generated by uh, impulse reaction turbine this turbine occupies less space for the same power so power space requirement is more for uh, impulse uh, reaction turbine and obviously blade manufacturing is easier for uh, impulse turbine because it, uh, and here because they are uh, profile type of blades and here the blades are air foil type so manufacturing is little difficult if you compare with the manufacturing of impulse turbine blades <laughs> now in a steam turbine when the steam enters the blade suppose there is a blade let us understand the velocity diagram because we need velocity diagram when we want to judge the output and the power from the steam turbine so steam turbine blade is moving with the velocity u in this direction so steam should glide over the blade surface right steam should glide over the blade surface already it is moving with a uh, velocity u right so what should be the velocity of absolute velocity of the steam that is one thing right so we'll draw simply draw the uh, the velocity diagram suppose this is the velocity of plate u and steam is coming in this direction this is going to be the relative velocity so blade should be like this it should glide over the blade so blade has to be like this it should not be like this because in that case steam will, there will be a axial thrust on the if there is axial thrust if there is an axial thrust that the, uh, the the turbine will start shaking it is totally undesired so this is known as blade inlet angle and this one is known as nozzle inlet angle right and when leaving when leaving it should leave here right so like this now this is suppose this is c1 this is cr1 this is u this is cr2 leaving from this side right it is again along the curvature of the blade and then we get this is the absolute velocity c2 this is the absolute velocity of the steam which is leaving the so this is a velocity so for any rotor dynamic machine whether it is a steam turbine or a, a gas turbine or a axial flow turbine radial flow turbine velocity gram diagram has to be prepared and this velocity diagram helps in designing the turbine and helps in finding out the different different things like what is the output of the turbine right so so with this i conclude this lecture thank you very much